more and more evidence suggests that ancient and modern humans interbred in Africa, according to scientists. For example, the reanalysis of a 13,000-year-old skull from a cave in West Africa reveals a skull that appears more primitive than its age suggests. The findings suggest that archaic human ancestors did not die out quickly in Africa, but instead coexisted and bred with their descendants until relatively recently. The skull, discovered in Nigeria's Iwo Eleru cave in 1965, does not resemble a modern human. It is longer and flatter, with a strong brow ridge, resembling a much older skull from Tanzania estimated to be 140,000 years old. Even though it is only 13,000 years old, the skull appears much more primitive. This implies that human evolution in Africa was more complex. Indeed, the transition to modern humans was not a straightforward transition, and ancient humans did not die out after giving birth to the modern human race. In fact, they may have coexisted with their descendants in Africa, exchanging genes, until much later than previously thought. According to the researchers, their findings also highlight a significant lack of knowledge about human evolution in the region. They say we only have a few fossils and have no idea about natural variation within populations. We would expect that the situation is not simple, but rather deep and complex. Moreover, separate research indicates that genetic mixing between hominin species occurred in Africa as recently as 35,000 years ago. The Iwo Eleru site in southwestern Nigeria is a large rock shelter. The skull was discovered among over 500,000 later Stone Age artifacts at the site. It was discovered as part of a skeleton that had been buried under a thin layer of soil. The skeleton was excavated and plastered over, and the skull was removed from the body. As stated, this skull's morphology differs greatly from that of other recent modern humans in Africa. Despite its young age, Iwo Eleru has primitive characteristics, it is longer and lower, and it has a prominent supraorbital torus. In fact, it most closely resembles the skull of Ngoloba from Tanzania, which is 120,000 years older, when compared to other older and more modern African specimens. The cranial vault is relatively long and low, with moderate recession of the frontal bone. For a male, the brow ridges are moderately developed, and there is no pronounced nasal root. What is left of the nasal area suggests that the nasal bridge was relatively flat, and X-ray evidence indicates that there was little frontal sinus development. Except for a small collection of fragments, the upper face is missing, but it is unlikely that the upper face was very large based on what has survived. Although there is no pronounced chin, the mandible is well developed and masculine in appearance. The teeth are not attached to the jaws except for two lower premolars, and it is unknown where the surviving teeth were originally placed. The biological age of the Iwo Eleru fossil has been estimated to be more than 30 years, based on evidence of tooth wear. What is left of the skeleton is mostly crushed fragments of large bones. The surviving remains indicate he was of medium height and build, standing no taller than 165 centimeters. Remarkably, Chris Stringer of the British Museum wrote in his article titled, Population Relationships of Later Pleistocene Hominids, a Multivariate Study of Available Crania, that there were surprising similarities between the crania of the Solo Man of Java, Omo II of Ethiopia, and that of Iwo Eleru. Both these fossils dated to 100 to 200,000 years ago, also much older than Iwo Eleru. According to the study's authors, the late Pleistocene dating of the Iwo Eleru fossil implies, that the transition to anatomical modernity in Africa was more complicated than previously thought, with late survival of archaic features and possibly deep population substructure in Africa during this time. The Iwo Eleru fossil has been suggested to be an archaic hybrid or a relict archaic human population. There are three dominant explanations for the Iwo Eleru fossil's atypical cranial shape, the first, that Iwo Eleru was a hybrid with archaic African populations, the second, that Iwo Eleru fossil was a member of a relict archaic population that was replaced by more modern humans at the start of the Holocene era, and the third, that Iwo Eleru may have descended from a lineage that existed 200,000 to 400,000 years ago, and was wiped out by humans. The research revealed that Iwo Eleru possesses neurocranial morphology intermediate in shape between archaic hominins and modern humans, such a long apparently distinct lineage that terminated in West Africa perhaps 12,000 years ago with no obvious sign of living descendants, suggests that the Iwo Eleru lineage quite likely represents a distinct species of near-modern human. But what does all this mean? 
as we have discovered in recent years, the evolution of our species in Africa is far more complex than a linear process in which some populations gradually evolve. Some archaic groups evolved into modern lineages, but their history did not end there. Several of these populations continued to breed with modern descendants until relatively recently. Indeed, genetics supports these findings, as evidenced by the following examples of recent studies. A genomic study of 21 individuals from 15 populations discovered not only recent breeding events between different African groups, but also hybridization with a ghost population of archaic humans that diverged from the modern human lineage near the split between Neanderthals and Denisovans. Another study of 405 sub-Saharan genomes documented the introgression of archaic hominins into the modern human genome. The study found that between 2% and 19% of their genome comes from an archaic group that diverged before the split of Neanderthal and modern human lineages. Just as Neanderthals interbred with modern humans in Eurasia, and these with Denisovans in Asia, there was also breeding within our species between archaic and modern groups that had taken different evolutionary paths, as evidenced by the features of certain fossils, and Iwo Eluru could be one of them. For example, the Y chromosome of an African-American former slave from South Carolina, born circa 1819 to 1827, was identified as an outlier lineage to all other known Y haplotypes in the human population. This Y haplotype was named A00 after the previously identified oldest lineage, which was renamed A0. The discovery of a new Y haplotype is always exciting, and this particular haplotype is unique in its basal position on the Y haplotype tree, which justifies its moniker, the Y chromosomal Adam haplotype. However, the announcement from this study that the time to the most recent common ancestor of all human Y chromosomes is approximately 338,000 years ago with a 95% confidence interval of 237,000 to 580,000 years was surprising on many levels. For starters, this estimate is more than double the oldest previous estimate of 141,500 years old, and it is significantly larger than all previous or subsequent estimates, which ranged from 46,000 to 160,000 years old. Second, it predated the most ancient mitochondrial DNA which was recently estimated to be only slightly older than the Y chromosome. Third, the most recent common ancestor estimate this time, is 142,000 years older than the oldest known anatomically modern human, which is estimated to be 196,000 years old. Thus, the time to the most recent common ancestor implies that either this Y chromosome is from a different species, or that the ancestral population of anatomically modern Homo sapiens became subdivided into genetically differentiated subpopulations much earlier than previously thought. Remarkably, one of the scientists from this study speculated that early Homo sapiens mated with a unknown archaic species in western Central Africa. Although either of the above scenarios could be correct, there is no scientific evidence to support either for the Y chromosome. However, in a recent blog post, paleoanthropologist John Hawkes posed the question, how much do Y-chromosome haplogroups influence our understanding of modern human origins? He says that the divergent A00 haplogroup digs deeper into the modern human Y-chromosome tree. According to Hawkes, the recent redating of anatomically modern humans and reclassification of North African archaics such as Jebel Erhoud, are due in part to the discovery of the introgressed A00 haplogroup. Between 240,000 and 580,000 years ago, the A uh, haplogroup of the Y chromosome branch appears to have diverged from the rest of the modern human Y chromosome tree. It is still found in some men in modern day Cameroon, as well as some African American men. In comparison to the rest of the Y chromosome tree, this is very early. In comparison to the autosomal genome, it is not very early indicating that African populations began to become genetically differentiated around 300,000 years ago or so. According to Hawkes, it's conceivable this haplogroup entered recent human populations through interbreeding with a more ancient, diverged branch of archaic humans. Today's story of African, archaic, humans is complicated because we have just enough data to raise questions but not enough data to answer them. Circling back to the the Iwo Eluru skull fragment from Nigeria, a specimen that we now know is less than 16,000 years old, which has archaic-looking anatomy in some details. Hawkes speculates that perhaps this is a late-surviving pre-modern human population in West Africa that contributed in some way to today's people. 
What's more, evidence for ghost population contributions to West African and Central African hunter-gatherers exists. All of this evidence comes from statistical analyses of living people's genomes, and different research groups have reached different conclusions, some point to multiple admixtures, from very ancient, diverged groups as different as today's people from Neanderthals, but all within Africa. Others point to a possible, pre-modern, population, an outgroup to all modern people that diverged only 400,000 or 500,000 years ago, and contributed a much larger fraction of West African genetic ancestry today. Some researchers believe the Jebel Erhoud hominins were members of such a pre-modern ghost population. However, the anatomy of these crania does not match what the common ancestor of all African populations looked like. Therefore, that A00 haplogroup does not appear to mark that early divergence because it is not found in African Khoesan. This group is known to be the most ancient human lineage that split from non-Africans at least 200,000 years ago. Nevertheless, soon after our evolution, modern humans began to spread steadily across Africa. These ancient humans were driven out and replaced by modern humans wherever we went. As evidenced by the Iwu Eluru skull from Nigeria, some archaic human species were able to halt our expansion for a longer period of time than the Neanderthals, to around 13,000 years ago. This replacement took time, it was a long, slow fight, a war of attrition, rather than blitzkrieg.